Hi everybody, and this is my lecture at the GPC, Global Peace Convention 2019, Seoul, Korea, which was held 27th of February 2019. The title of my presentation is Reimagining Korean Education for the Future. I'm Hwa Guk Lee. Director, Korea Institute for Character Education and Culture, and also Professor Emeritus of Chemistry Education, Jeonbuk National University. 저는 한국인 성문화원장 이화국 교수입니다. 저는 전북대학교 화학교육과의 명예교수이기도 합니다. Okay, let's move. Uh, the agendas and approach. My approach is based on my 50 years of involvement in Korean education. I derive the educational reform issue from history of education and also the history of education suggests a certain uh, direction for the resolving the issues for better uh, solution. I call it dreams. The dreams are implied in education reform issues. After suggesting the issues and dreams, I will compare the issues with the dreams. Let's go a very brief history of education in Korea. Uh, Korea is a uh, country of a long history, more than half a million years. Uh, there were old settlements in Korea Peninsula. Mm. Even that time, obviously, there was an informal education because for their living skill must be continued, transferred to their children. And so parents, the elderly people, teach their children their living skills such as hunting, obviously at the time very important, fruit collecting and fishing, and importantly, tool making. Because human beings are tool, uh, tool makers and users. Korean history, written down history here, uh, begins about uh, uh, two uh, 4,000 years, more than 4,000 years, sometimes 5,000 years. The first uh, Korean kingdom was uh, Gojoseon. Gojoseon means Old Joseon. It was founded by Dangun, the first king. One very important thing about Dangun is that he declared Hongigingan as the philosophy of uh, governing uh, the kingdom. Nowadays is the slogan or goal of education. It has been continued up to now as the basis of uh, education. After uh, uh, nearly after 22,000 years, the Kojoson was divided into three kingdoms. The three kingdoms in this map, Goguryeo, Silla, and Baekje. The land of Goguryeo was extended to uh, Manchuria. It was not, uh, uh, not only in the Korea, Korean Peninsula. Nowadays it's Chinese land, but at the time we had a quite large land in Manchuria. The Buddhism uh, was introduced about 4th or 5th century, so uh, the Three Kingdom was uh, a Buddhist country. But education was uh, more based on Confucianism. So they taught uh, Confucian classics as a content. Obviously, we haven't got a Korean letter, we adopted Chinese letter. Chinese letter was used in education. It was an elite education system because it teach very limited number of uh, children from royal family, 
which will become a kingdom's leader at the time. You will be surprised that the establishment year of Teag is 372 AD because it's more than 700 years earlier than the first Western University. Do you know the name of first Western University? Yes, it's a Bologna University. Bologna University in Italy was established at 1088. So Teag is about 700 years earlier than Bologna University. It's a remarkable. Korean education has a long history. Other kingdom also had their uh, higher education institution. Uh, even though the Baekje, we haven't got a writ written record because it, uh, history or the culture was totally destroyed by the Silla who unified the three kingdoms later. Korea, the unified Silla uh, was, uh, a, a, was possible um, by alliance of Silla with China at the time 10. 10 China and Silla allied to conquer Baekje and Goguryeo and they established unified Silla. One important thing of a unified Silla, one important education evolution is that the first, first government scholarship student, overseas government scholar student, was sent to China at the time. Quite a number, sometimes 100 uh, students uh, to China. After the study, they came back to Silla to be a leader of that kingdom, but some of them remained in China to serve for the Chinese government. Korea and Joseon dynasty succeeded and unified Silla. Uh, Korea and Joseon last about 1,000 years. It's quite a long time. Two very important educational evolution during the Korea dynasty was uh, the uh, establishment of private education. We call it dual system, the private education and the public education. Uh, the private education very strong in Korea still now. It has a long tradition. Kwanhak means public school, Sahang means private school. You know, at now, three out of four universities in Korea are private, and half of the high school are private. Very strong private education tradition. And one more important thing is Kwago. Uh, Kwago is a uh, civil service exam. After the education, Kwanak or Sa, public or private education, they uh, can apply for the Kwaga and if they pass that uh, exam, they will be high official of the kingdom. Dynasty here. The Korea is the uh, origin of the English name Korea. Korea's English name is is based on and the Korea and dynasty. The Joseon dynasty succeeded the Korea dynasty and they enhanced, enhanced the Kwaga system. Uh, and uh, Song Gyungwan. Song Gyungwan was the uh, higher education and at the time the school education to support the Song Gyungwan was established. Like uh, a Sa Gwan or Hyanggyo in the capital and in rural areas. Also, there was a Sowon and Sodang. Sowon and Sodang was a secondary or primary school. It's a private. So, uh, in, during the Joseon dynasty, not only the university, but the schools, which teach the basic things to enter the university, was established. And the Kwak was enhanced. And you must understand Korean caste system. Perhaps you haven't about it before. To understand the 
Koreans are devotion to education. <clears throat> Koreans are very devoted to education. Why? One major reason is the Korean caste system. In Korean caste system, which has been developed for 2000 years, the top level is scholars, like, uh, not like Brahman in Indian uh, caste system, and they must uh, pass the uh, exam, civil service exam, Quago, after the uh, study at higher institute or school. That was the only gateway to success. <clears throat> even now, uh, even now, the university entrance examination is considered as a gateway to success. The caste system, in Korean caste system, the scholar was a top level and they got a respected, great respect to be, a, uh, to be a, uh, the scholar. They need education. So Korean uh, began to be devoted in education. At the end of the Joseon dynasty, civilian and Christian schools uh, began to be established. Unfortunately, uh, Joseon, and this is a, a map of Joseon. Joseon was consists of eight districts. And this is a Korean Peninsula, current Korean Peninsula, because Manchuria was uh, uh, taken by China. Unfortunately, uh, Joseon was annexed by Japan as a col colony in 1910. We have a very sad story about the Japanese colonial rule for 35 years. Japan introduced a Japanized Western school system to Korea. Uh, uh, nowadays, we call school Hakkyo. It was introduced by Japan. They even established one university, Geicho University. Present day is a prestigious whole national university. We call it SNU. And there are many Christian and civilian schools and colleges. Some of them uh, uh, was developed into a very pre prestigious university like uh, Yonsei University, Korea University, we call SNU, Korea University, Yonsei University, the acronym of uh, that university is uh, SKY. Uh, so we call the SKY University. Entering the Sky University as dreams of all Korean. After 35 years severe uh, rule of Japan, we have been liberated due to the World War II. And so all Korean uh, were delighted. Yeah, we are. We have an independent. We have a strong one nation. But unfortunately, the strong power at that time, the United States and the Soviet Union, had different ideas. They decided to divide Korea into two. Like this map, North Korea and South Korea. In North Korea, Russian troops landed. In South Korea, U.S. military government was established and they introduced American school system and implemented it, implemented system and curriculum in Korea. On the other hand, North Korea established their school system based on Soviet Union, communist model. Well, unfortunately, in 1950, Korean War broke. It lasted three years. And it destroyed Korea entirely, total destruction of society and infrastructures. We had to uh, develop our country from the ash, from the beginning. Fortunately enough, South Korea uh, could make a great economic development during the last 40 years. But in North Korea, they uh, lived quite well up to uh, 1970, mid-1970. 
But after that, they became the poorest country in the world. Why? Because they have got a strong nuclear power and the United States and UN don't like it. Severe economic sanction began and their, their uh, economies uh, tumbled down. Now they are the poorest country, but with a strong nuclear weapon. To the, uh, well, uh, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump met in Hanoi, Vietnam, for some meeting to discuss about uh, banning, uh, the uh, banning of the denuclearization, banning the nuclear weapon. Perhaps their meeting will facilitate a unification of Korea, we hope. Based on those educational background, historical background, I'll talk about uh, issues, education reform issues in Korea. I group uh, them in three domains. Domain one, current recurring issues, most important one. Uh, if we are going to talk about future direction, we should investigate the emerging 21st century. There will be, uh, there should be certain emerging issues. The unification uh, is a good news, but if we have, uh, we are going to have a reunification, there should be additional issues due to reunification. First of all, current recurring issues. I can enumerate a dozen issues, problems of Korean education. I can expose it to you uh, to find a desirable direction to resolve it. Well, I just enumerate uh, just uh, several. Uh, first of all, Korean education system is very uh, rigid. As it, it is unable to adapt to changes in need of learners and society. Well, education system must follow the change of a source, uh, a society and change of need of the learners. Also, it should lead the change of learners and society. It should follow and also it should learn, uh, lead. But Korean education system is too rigid. Uh, school curriculums are lacking relevance to real life and student diversity. Because the teaching is centered on college entrance examination. And so the content is not related to life, it's academic to academic. It has nothing to do with real life and it doesn't care about student diversity. School teachers are very uh, authoritarian, authoritarian school teachers because they urge student road to memorization. Why? To pass the college entrance examination. Some of them might think that, okay, students, memorize it, memorize it, and after you pass the college entrance examination, you can forget all of, the, all of those things, and you can enjoy your life in the university. So you must sacrifice the life in high school. Obviously, students' school life is unhappy. They are suffered from heavy study and heavy examination burden. Their health are threatened. The high suicidal rate of a teenager in Korea is a very serious problem because a school life is unhappy. Perhaps most Korean will blame Korean admission system, Korean college admission system, because they think it's the both lack of the development of Korean education or Korean society in general. Nowadays, we have a very high enrollment ratio to university. Nearly high, uh, 80% of high school graduates go to higher education. 
It's a big strength of Korean education system, but high enrollment produce a, a big side effect. We produce overeducated university graduate who can't take the job, blue collar job. There are enough blue collar job, but they are overeducated, so they are reluctant to take the blue collar job. They want only white collar jobs. Korean family spend a big sum of money in private education. About 5% of GMP is invested in education in Korea, but out of them, out of them uh, more than half is a private education. A family, uh, a family uh, typically will spend 20 or 30% of their income uh, for uh, education, starting from kindergarten to university. In university education, uh, the quality was always the issues, but the quality uh, began to be improved gradually. But still, it has got some issues that should be resolved. It's a lack of globalization, lack of diversity, lack of autonomy. University president, national university president, is appointed by the uh, president of Korea. And uh, the Ministry of Education control, would like to control university with the financial support and university evaluation accreditation system. Now, we are uh, living in 21st century. 21st century is, uh, uh, we call it first industrial revolution age. So we must be prepared for the revolution. AI, IoT, 3D printing, nanotechnology or biotechnology are some typical examples of uh, the first industrial revolution products. Also, uh, for the future, we must prepare uh, those industrial revolution. And one more very, uh, one more very special uh, challenge or change that we must be prepared is a demographic change. In Korea, uh, from the year 2050, the population will be decreased. We'll uh, face the so we call population cliff. Why? The birth rate is the lowest in the world. There are uh, no babies. There are so many old, old people. Aging society, uh, ultra aging society in 2050. Furthermore, uh, the young generation, they would like to ma get married. No marriage means uh, population cliff. Low birth rate, no marriage. It's a double shock. We must prepare the sort of demographic change. The culture, new culture is uh, emerging and the uh, job market is evolving. Perhaps in this, in this century, half of the current job will disappear and new jobs will be created. We must train the labor force suitable for that sort of change. Uh, in the 21st century, uh, the education system should improve the social mobility and it should relieve the education inequality. But nowadays, it's a problem. The richer get richer, the poor get poorer. So uh, the education inequality is increased rather than decreased. Uh, we must emphasize a student's creativity, students' creativity, meta knowledge, knowledge of knowledge, learning to learn, character, and the learning skills. It's more important than the road to memorization to take the exam. And the society will be globalized faster than now. 
we need some sort of a standardization of a system, curriculum, and exam. Uh, due to the K culture, K pop, the international students are increasing in higher education. But we are now uh, not well prepared to support those students. We need to develop, we, we need to develop a, a better supporting system for them. High technology mm, to teach, to learn, to manage will be increased. There will be plenty of uh, hardware and software that will be uh, used uh, in education. They can be used in education. But the hardware or software is not important. What is more important is the courseware, the contents of education. So how to develop uh, the uh, relevant content, the effective and efficient content are the issues in 21st century. The unification, that is uh, Korean's wish. The biggest wish of Korean is uh, the unification. It will be a great chance, great opportunity to most Korean. But it can be a crisis because we need, we have a dream of soft landing and development to unify the education system, but it will be a daunting job. We are not sure the success of soft landing. So it will be a big issue. We must restructure school system, school curriculum entirely. There should be a massive development of educational resources, textbook, courseware, teaching resources. We must improve North Korean education because they are poor uh, in education now, quality of education now. Uh, to improve it, we must invest a huge government spending to improve it. It's what we call unification cost. Who are going to pay it? It's a, a big issue. Unification is good, but it will increase the conflicts between the central and local governments. They, are, they will fight for the uh, roles and responsibility. But actually they want to control, they want to have a power, more power to control the schools and higher education institutions, universities. The Ministry of Education and local education authority, uh, they will fight for the uh, roles and responsibility, actually the power. Now, how can we resolve all those issues, current issues and uh, 21st century issues, the unified Korean issues? Uh, to resolve this problem, we must investigate the desirable education system. This is a diagram of educational system. The core of education system is the curriculum and instruction. It is enabled by school life, student school life, and school system. And these are supported by educational environment and resources, and of course, other administrative support. I'll uh, suggest uh, very important uh, dreams. Dreams is what I want. But it's uh, not only for me, it is uh, our wish, what we want, the, what Korean want. Uh, so let's move to dreams. First of all, we want to have an uh, excellent school system. It's my dream, our dream, Korean dream. Because uh, in the 21st century, uh, especially if we are going to have a reunification, we can use it as a, a chance to for synergic integration of South and North Korea, Korean school system. It's a very hard job, but we are doing it properly. If we are doing it properly, it can array, arise uh, synergic 
effect. The excellent school system, which could support changes in needs of learners and the whole society, also it could lead the desirable changes of the society. So education system not only not only follow the social system, uh, system of society, changes in society, but it should lead the changes of society. The excellent school system should nurture a sensible, creative, active, and responsible person for the globalized society. And the school system uh, should promote social integration and equal education opportunity. If uh, the new school system uh, uh, have this sort of uh, character, it will be called an excellent school system. I hope the curriculum uh, should be more relevant. It should be balanced among knowledge, skills, attitude, and value necessary whole person. Current education is centered on student knowledge, remote, remote memorization. What, what is more important in the future is their skills, attitude, and value necessary to a whole person, like curiosity, character, critical thinking, problem-solving skill. These are more important in curriculum. These are more important uh, things that students uh, must learn because it will contribute to the individual potential development and make the learning enjoyable. It's much better than much better than rote memorization. And these are uh, competence relevant to sustainable development for students' future life and future, future work. Instruction should be more effective than now. It should ensure enjoyable learning with personalized instruction because uh, learning type, types of learning is different from student to students. So the learning should be, instruction should be personalized to ensure enjoyable learning. The instruction should facilitate cognitive, metacognitive, social, emotional, and practical skills. Uh, we should use smart instruction tools like uh, VR, AR, SNS, game simulation, mobile, a smartphone. We must use it very effectively. As I said, we need a, uh, a quality, quality contents courseware for this sort of smart instructional tools. Perhaps uh, current offline uh, school, offline teaching will be replaced. Perhaps more than half of it will be replaced by cyber, uh, cyber learning Cy because cyber learning is very powerful and effective. Any place, any time, low cost, you can repeat it as many, uh, uh, as many as time. Many times you can repeat it if you don't understand it. But I think I need to make a quality blend system, blend system of offline and online, which can support effective and independent learning. It's my dream. The school life uh, should be happier than now. We should try to reduce students' burden of a college intoxication and reliance on remote memorization. We need to decrease school work and cramming especially for more self-directed learning. It is a student who can decide why, what, how to learn. A student should have their voice for these very important things in education. 
in learning. The school environment must be safer than now. We have issues of uh, bullying, sexual abuse, and smoking. Oh, well, uh, government banned uh, drinking coffee the last year. We need, anyway, you need a safer school so students can enjoy a happier school life. Perhaps if we have a complete free education, a student will have a happier school life. Not only they don't worry about tuition and textbook, perhaps they will be supported, the room and board. Hopefully some stipend, then student will be happier than now. We need a quality environment and resources. Nowadays, we are we having a very severely hot summer and very severely cold winter. And the air is full of dust, fine dust, ultra fine dust. The environment is a serious problem, not only for school, but all human living in Korea. We are worrying about uh, uh, perhaps we can not survive until the end of this century because of the climate change. We need a comfortable indoor and outdoor school environment. The resources, learning and teaching resources and tools must be diversified and must be uh, plentiful. In education, teacher is a very important, important factor. We need dedicated professional human resources, teachers and administrators, head teachers, superintendent, minister of education. We need a dedicated professional, not politician, not someone who urged the student wrote to memorization. Professional human resources, which facilitate a student's development of a whole uh, as a whole person, Hong Yi Ging Gan. The quality of teacher and educational facility in North Korea is very poor. We should improve the environment and resource in North Korea. Finally, administration. Administration, the most important administrational support is money. They must provide money. If we are going to have a completely free schooling, by increasing public spending, well, it will be very nice. Then where can the government collect more money to spend? I think we should reduce private uh, educational expenditure. It's more than uh, public spending. So the public sector wisely uh, adopt wisely deduce the uh, private as spending to observe it as a public spending. We need definitely uh, need intensive and extensive in service uh, teach training, not, uh, not only now but for the 21st century and after the unification uh, we need we'll need more intensive and extensive in service training. Finally, I'll briefly mention the university autonomy. Hmm. University autonomy will uh, increase, will enhance the quality of education. I think it's good for not only teaching, it's good to promote researching, it's good for better man management. And so the Ministry of Education allow university autonomy for better teaching, better researching, and better management. Well, and that's all for now. Thank you very much for your attention.